City and community leaders admit has become far too common across Columbus. The lives of kids taken in an instant. The latest round of deadly gunfire involving teens here in East Columbus Tuesday night. Young lives changed in an instant. An 18-year-old locked up for murder. Two other kids dead. It's stories like this pushing community leaders like John Pace into action. So we want to come out and be able to shake hands and give the students a hug and let them touch us and see us as real people. Pace, the CEO of Classic for Columbus, one of those on the ground level. <laughs> trying to meet kids where they are, trying to make a difference. Once they see you care, you can see the tears come, the smiles come. His group organizing a huge rally Thursday at Lyndon McKinley STEM Academy. <laughs> Star athletes speaking with students about the importance of education and making the right decisions in life. A message hitting home kids here thankful for the support. I feel like it's amazing and it can really inspire the kids here too. At one time I hung out with a bad group of people, got into school fights and I just never really liked that and I didn't want that imagery for myself. Pace making it his focus to impact young lives. Let them know that we relate to them, we understand their challenges. A fight he doesn't plan to lose. Volunteers are hopeful their efforts will make a difference leading kids on the right path and possibly saving lives in the process. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. For the coaches leading this program, their mission is an important one, not only helping to bring diverse backgrounds to the sport of volleyball, but also giving the young girls who take part a sense of family and motivation. At Burliner Sports Park, the passion and skill is evident. The Prophecy Volleyball Club, one of the best teams in Columbus, making their mark across the country. We travel throughout the Midwest, um, North, South, East, West. We travel all over the nation. Ready? For the coaches and players, this is more than a team. It's like a family outside of your own family. And it's like we all support each other. Let's go! I built really great friendships throughout the year. This is my third season playing, and I've been playing with a majority of the same girls. And it's our bond just really goes closer the more we play together. The club founded not only to enrich the lives of these young ladies, but literally worked to add to the game through diversity. Representation for our group is very important. A lot of times we're at tournaments and we're the only all minority team. And I think just the excitement that we bring to the game and we're always getting compliments about just how our girls are playing and just the success that we've seen together as a club. This game also serving as a release from the pressures of real life. We have a lot of inner city athletes and so many of our girls face challenges and losses in their community, um, losing friends at such a young age and they shouldn't have to go through that trauma. So volleyball has almost been like an outlet for us. This team hoping to serve as an inspiration and a reflection of what the game should be. Girls taking part in the program range in age from 11 to 18. Many of them have hopes and dreams of playing at the college level. One thing's for sure, they're off to a great start. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. We've been following the investigation into the search for this firebug since the very start. It's been months since Chavez Moment's shop went up in flames. Since then, he's been mapping out plans for his future. For something like this to happen, it was just, it's still unbelievable. Momin telling us he was heartbroken when his Reynoldsburg barbershop was set on fire last year. He says the front glass door shattered and someone ignited a fire inside. To see something like that happen, it was just like unexplainable. Not long after that day, making a plan to keep the business alive. The, the rebuild is coming along. Moment buying a bus, converting it into a mobile barbershop. We've got everything you want traditionally in a barbershop, so we're bringing traditional services in a non-traditional way. Another interesting note, Moment, a longtime mental health advocate, has used his business as a resource for men, giving them the tools and support necessary to make it through mental health struggles. Those efforts continuing, he hopes to serve as a motivation for others. It's like the Phoenix rising. It's like they burnt that down, but it pushed me to do something else.
moment shaken by the fire at a loss for who or why someone would do this, but stressing he never had a doubt that he would reopen his business. In Reynoldsburg, Rodney Dunnigan reporting. Public health leaders in this community stressing that violence is a public health emergency and they're sounding the alarm. It hurts. It, it's unreal. Darnetta Jefferson knows the pain of loss all too well. Her 17-year-old granddaughter, Mackenzie Ridley's young life, cut down by a bullet outside of Far East Side Rec Center. We miss her so much. She was beautiful. My, my first grandchild. Those directly impacted by the violence like Jefferson, along with city leaders, have stressed the violence is out of hand. This powerful display outside of Columbus Public Health, a reflection of the lives lost in a year's time. These flags representing so many who are loved but no longer here. Basically your world, your life is totally different. It's not the same anymore after something like this happens. Columbus Public Health social worker Marion Stuckey, one of those on the front lines, working with survivors and families of victims, amplifying their voices and providing needed support. The families are often left with the thought of what could I have done differently? Um, how could I have changed this? And it's really, it's extremely difficult and it, there's nothing that they can do. So it's, it's a very hard, very heavy emotional toll. For Jefferson, her mission now, keeping her granddaughter's name and memory alive. Also fighting to save other young lives. It hurts my heart to see what the city is going through. Health leaders say this display is just a small reflection of the seriousness of this issue of violence across the city of Columbus. Their hope is that the community will come together to work to tackle this issue head on. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. For many, it was one mistake that took their lives down the wrong path. After living life in lockup, a large number trying to get back the time they lost with family and friends and make change and a difference in their communities. Terry Green, Majid Muhammad, and Jaquita Seeley, all with different stories, but a path that landed them in a similar place. <laughs> Behind bars, all now using their stories, their lives as an example. It all, you know, comes from, you know, situations that we experienced when we were young. Um, trauma that we experience. Terry we Green, who ran into trouble selling drugs um, as a kid, my... now running the outreach group Think, Make, Live Youth. His focus, keeping local teens out of harm's way and out of lockup. I've been through those circumstances and so now that I overcame those, I can be able to show you that you don't have to go through that. Muhammad serving time on a drugs and weapons conviction, spending most of his youth in lockup. I'm thankful that I was able to get the supports, you know, to, to make that transformation. Now working with Impact Community Action, looking to help others. You know, I have something to give you that can benefit you, you know, and that, and, and that benefit that I'm giving you is my experiences. Seely locked up for theft at the age of 19, a mistake she says still follows her. I was 19, I'm 36 now. I have not been back incarcerated, I have not committed any other crimes, and I just feel like it's very important for someone that looks like me, that has a past, be able to get that second chance. It's very important because we want to be successful, we want to live a healthy and normal life, and we just want to be a part of the community and, and accept it. She now runs her own crocheting business, featured by ABC6 anchor Station Akin. She wants to show people who've been incarcerated they can make a turnaround. But I always want to show people that it's a possibility for people to change. Each stressing the importance of reentry week here in Central Ohio, indicating to the community and those who've spent time behind bars that people can make a shift in life. Advocates say that many of these individuals who serve time are living and working in various communities throughout the area. They simply want an opportunity, a chance to right their wrongs and show they can make a positive impact. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. So one of a kind partnership volunteers with the ICE Mentors organization heading into Columbus City Prep School for Girls. The mission, not an easy one, but very important, keeping young girls focused on a positive future. So they identify an issue, um, they come up with ideas, and then they, they go to step two here 
and they simplify it. What's next? We have an issue. What are some problems that we can solve? Erin Hathaway and her team with ICE Mentors looking to make a difference in the lives of young girls. We want them to think about life beyond what they're dealing with. It's okay, Tony. <laughs> what many are dealing with is pain and loss. Teen girls becoming the victim in a growing number of cases. 15-year-olds Maria Sandoval and Lovely Kendricks, two recent lives cut short in high-profile shootings. And she's a positive representation of what a girl is today. Hathaway um, pushing to prevent more COVID, young victims. They, what I needed in 2007 as a high school student is not the same and what these students need in 2022. Volunteers starting their efforts here at Columbus City Prep School for Girls, providing young ladies with a listening ear, mentorship, and life skills. My feelings are valid. Eighth like, grader Markayla Glenn thankful for the support. You're just learning about a lot of different types of leadership. You're learning that your feelings are valid, how to be able to talk to other people and listen also. Hathaway yeah. stressing programs like hers, the start of needed change within the community. So I'm proud of the work that we're doing here and I'm really proud of the leadership um, that the girls are receiving here at the school. The program at Columbus City Prep School for Girls focuses on middle school students. Organizers say they're trying to focus on students before they reach high school, getting them on the right track early. The hope is to save young lives. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. Members of the Columbus branch of the NAACP say their work and most importantly their mission is vital to the community. The Columbus branch of the NAACP has a long history of activism dating back to 1915, a major focus on civil rights and social justice. We are the voice for the voiceless, people that don't have a voice. We are their voice. We salute you and thank you for your dedication. The organization's president, Nana Watson, indicating their work key in helping to move communities of color forward. It's in our DNA and we will continue our crusade on fighting social injustices. Tuesday, the Columbus branch hosting a Founders Day event aimed at shining a spotlight on their efforts. It's important that we recognize and continue to support the work of the NAACP. From food and clothing drives to providing educational resources and working with police to better connect with local neighborhoods, the group at the forefront of community outreach. The work still has to be done. Volunteers with the group say it's important to keep the community up to date with their work, stressing their activism is leading to positive change across Columbus. Rodney Dunnigan reporting. His work is literally his life's calling, fighting to ensure kids in this community have a bright future. It's very painful, very hurtful. It's very sad, you know, because I feel that six year olds should be burying their parents, their grandparents, and not the other way around. Um, but it also reminds me that there's still work to be done. For Pullen, it's a labor of love. The head of the People Like Me project focused on providing opportunities for local kids, leading anti-violence and drug prevention programs along with educational outreach and mentoring. They know I'm someone that's, I care for them and, I, and they respect me and I respect them. Friday, a massive part of that effort, a fundraising event honoring a list of community advocates who have boots on the ground in neighborhoods citywide. You have to make that connection. Um, you have to really right now talk to these kids, develop a relationship. Pullen states it plainly, if the community is looking to address issues of crime and violence, people within the city's neighborhoods have to step forward and put in the work to make it happen. He wants to be one of those leading the charge. Rodney Dunnigan reporting.